Now this week we're talking about making color choices in our painting, especially when we're working from photographs, because photographic color is not very good. But even if we're outside, we want to make choices for colors based on what we can mix on our palette, as opposed to just trying to copy what we see, which can be a disaster, especially if we're working with uh, photography. So if my goal when I'm painting, it helps to simplify things of what you're after. If you're after everything, if I want to show all the detail, I want the colors I see, it's just gonna, you're gonna get lost real quick. But when I paint, my goal is to suggest what the light's doing. And if I can do that in the biggest shapes possible, then I can go ahead and continue on to painting and add more detail, or I can just stop right there because I've already achieved what I wanted, which is to suggest the light in terms of big shapes. So it helps to be able to simplify first, if I can simplify my shapes into larger shapes, and then simplify the values, then the color will come a lot easier. But if my shapes are broken up into too many small shapes, which is you know detail, and same thing with values, too many small darks and lights, then color becomes almost impossible. But values are easy to achieve, the dark and the light, if I keep the shapes big. Again, if the shapes get too small, my values are real hard to figure out. So if I'm looking like at a reference here, if I'm looking at the rocks down in here, there's just too many little dark and light shapes. Shapes are too small and the values are too many. So I need to simplify everything. So I need to have bigger shapes. So instead of a bunch of little shapes, I will get a big shape like this, maybe another shape here, shape here. So I'm breaking it up into maybe five, six shapes for this whole riverbed in here instead of trying to paint every rock. And it's so easy to get caught up in that because these are nice shapes in here. I like these rock shapes. It's nice and varied. But if I don't start bigger first, I can never get there. I'd have to bigger than smaller, more comp or more simple to more complicated. It can't work the other way around. And color is so much more easier to deal with when I keep the shapes bigger. So looking at this photograph that will be a painting, the riverbed is kind of busy. All these trees in here, you know, you have little darks and lights, very complicated. So I need to simplify that also. When I look at these trees in the background here, all these dark pine trees, that is simplified for me pretty well. Um, and, it, and it runs all behind these yellow trees, which are kind of my focal point, I think or at least this yellow tree with some of the rocks in the background. That dark shape of the pine trees makes the yellow trees pop out more. And that's what you want. This is simplified pretty good. Background is simplified pretty good too. Even if I don't get these light distant greens, and I just get this shadow green, you know, right in here, that shadow, it's still going to work. I don't have to paint everything I see. And that's what you want, is to be able to simplify to make things stand out more. So my goal is not to paint all the little crevices and dots and dashes in the rocks up on the cliff or in the riverbed or every leaf in all the trees. It's to simplify. And again, if I can make the shape simple, then values a lot easier. And if values are easier, my choices of color mixtures will be a lot easier too. It's when we see too much that color becomes just impossible. So I, this is how I want to see the painting, how I want to block it in. And I'm using colors here that aren't in the photograph, like the background trees way in the distance. It's more of a greenish, a dark greenish blue. I've made it more of a blue. It pushes it back farther, gives me more contrast. My, the value I used, I used a little lighter value than this gives me more contrast against these dark trees. So I push the value between here and here. I've gotten this darker, this a little lighter. And then the darks back in here, which I've kept real simple, make these yellow trees stick out. And I have to have that contrast of dark pine trees in here and dark yellow-orange trees. The yellow-orange darks are a lot lighter than the evergreen darks back in there. 
and simplifying and keeping those uh, shapes simple and the values simple. Just works a lot better. Same thing with the rocks. I started with this overall value. Then just added a few dark accents and then a few light highlights. So basically really simplified it. Now here, this is a lot of this is the photograph. I just didn't paint over it much. I want to keep that a lot simpler. And the sky too. I, I popped some values and I used a color that I wanted, more of a bluish green, to suggest the light hitting the sky a bit more. And made a little bit more contrast. Simplified all these trees on the left side into just a couple of different colors, two different values, and again, a simple pattern of dark. My dark pattern flows all in here. That's kind of my dark pattern. If I can get that drawn on first, that sets up all the drawing. It separates everything for me nicely. Now, I did get a little busy in front and down here in the rocks because it is in the foreground. So I kept some of that, as you can see from the photograph, but simplifying everything else into simple shapes and values. Then I can decide what colors I'm going to use. I'm using more cad yellow light and a little bit of orange or alizarin, either one, to get that uh, kind of a yellow orange tree. And ultramarine blue with just a touch of yellow ochre for the dark blue green up there. And then just blue down here for the darkest darks. It's going to look greener because it's surrounded by so much green, but this is just straight blue in here. It's a little darker, a little cooler, and simple decisions, yellow greens for the trees up here. Some of the yellow green has a bit more yellow, some a bit more blue, but you can see the shapes are pulled together into more simple patterns. And we have to do that working photographs or outside because our eye sees way too much. So that's my goal there, is to make those a lot, lot more simple shape-wise, then value, then color becomes a lot easier. And making sure that the colors I use are colors from the color wheel. Same thing here. This is a um, field here in southern Arizona. And this is an older photograph. So it has a little more of a oh, filtered view. The colors are, the values are a little more simple. They stand out more, which is kind of nice. So this gives me big, simple shapes already. I want to reduce all this stuff to a simple one shape, one value to make it read better. But this is one that I think already has the values and shapes simplified. So when I decide on the colors, it'll be a bit, bit easier. And this is a, a photograph I took with my phone. So it's not as good. And you can see it's not as good because the darks just go a flat dark everywhere. The darks in the trees, Darks in the foreground, darks way in the background, darks on the barn. It's all the same dark. And when that happens, your colors, your paint is just going to flatten out. There's no depth, no value change. So I want to use colors here to affect depth. I want to use different colors to make things recede and different colors in the darks to give a little more variety because all the darks are the same value and color. So I made some changes here, starting first with these middle ground trees right here, more of a blue. And I know it's a green tree, and I could come back and maybe green this up just a little bit in the shadow, but not much. I want it different than the photograph. I don't want it like that. It's going to look real boring and kind of flat, but it's the value I want. It's not as dark here as it is here, and I want a value change, and that gives it to me. And then these are darker than the darks way back there. And that's what I want is that variation of darks as they go back a little bit lighter. And then the color gets a lot cooler, a little more blue. You can see on the trees over in here, when I switch back and forth, just eliminated the warm yellow green. This is what makes it work is to make it stay back. Now I can come back with a muted yellow green and add some lights in there. But the important thing is that cooler dark so that I can gradually get darker as I come forward. Also adding a bit more color and value to the, to the barn and just a strong color. I can always gray it with a little bit of a, a gray that I mix with blue and orange because it's a, a kind of a muted colored barn. But if I just paint what I see in the photograph, it's just going to go dead. So I want to push the color stronger. Same thing in the grass. I'll go a little lighter because I want to separate the grass value and color from the tree value and color. 
Right now, they separate more because I made the grass lighter, and that makes more depth on the painting. But if I take that away, the tree and the grass are too much the same value, plus too much the same color. So a little more yellow-green, a little more green-green in the tree. So that's the idea, uh, the th process of shape, simpler, value, more simple. Then the color is a little more simple. But it begins with seeing things in a very simple manner as opposed to seeing too many shapes and then that gives you too many values and then color becomes uh, really hard.